Infinite wealth lacks depth. Thank you. Goodbye. Mina! Mina! Oh, did you want me to say that, but with more words? Maybe a little proof? Okay, okay, but you better subscribe after I'm done. Whether you recognize it or not, your favorite parts of the Yakuza series probably surrounds its satirical display and sometimes critique of Japanese society and culture at the time of each game's setting. The sub-stories. <laughs> No, I've never been to Japan, so I'm not necessarily capable of making judgment. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh of these criticisms or any nuance therein. I know probably as much as you know, unless you're one of those guys my papa warned me about. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but I will always be one step ahead of you. Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker! Or, you know, actually, Japanese, you know. Um, cringe aside, I won't be addressing many of those moments on my channel, but here's one I do feel comfortable talking about. Cults. From my understanding, if the United States is a religious country, Japan is like a spiritualist one. All I mean by that is while much of the population is either atheist or otherwise non-religious, many still preserve traditional forms of religiosity and spirituality by practicing rituals, visiting shrines, and participating in celebrations. An environment where spirituality abounds, separate from any unifying doctrine or institution, is fertile ground for the seeds of any charismatic upstart with an anti-personality disorder. This is not a critique of Japan, I could say the same thing about Los Angeles, and it's not a defense of religion, only an observation of human nature or of nature in general. If there's a hole to fill, something or someone will step in to fill it. This is in line with one of the more obvious themes of Yakuza, something I'm gonna call the power paradox. This seemed like a term that someone came up with already, and they did but it doesn't look like they're using it in the same way that I am. What I mean by power paradox is that to wield power effectively or even achieve power, one must be undeserving of that power. Those who deserve that power are often incapable of achieving that power or wielding it effectively. As Kiryu, we often represent the ultimate power, at least outside of the main story. Should I expand on that? Probably, but I'm not gonna. If you want it, subscribe for it. This is about depth. Enter the order of Munan Chohept Onast. This cult, modeled after a few real life cults, is introduced in Yakuza 0, and its story doesn't really end until Yakuza 6. Those games were released one after another, but it sounds more dramatic when you say it that way. Order of Munan Chohept Onast can trace its roots back to the Edo period in the form of the Ejaneka, Ejane <coughs> cult, roughly meaning who cares. I have nothing to back this up, but it just, it's a, it's a theme. Seeking chronologically, the first encounter of the Munanchos was during the 80s when cults were cool. This time, it's Majima who discovers the cult when he spots an older woman berating what we now know are Munanchos, members of the order. Back in the 80s, Majima was cool and suave, unlike the Mad Dog of the early 2000s. He offers to help the woman, and chaos ensues the moment he joins the cult. <clears throat> the way the cult functions is a sort of Buddhist foundation with Scientology framing. The goal of the cult is to break ties with all earthly things, especially personal relationships outside of the cult. To do this, not only one must free your mind, but prove your piety in the form of titherance, which comes in the form of rinchos. What is a rincho? A measly 100,000 yen, roughly $600 at the time. Once you've paid your rincho, you receive kulipas, which are units of spiritual purity. Can't afford the 100k? Still short on kulipas? Well, then you have the shore pp, which is something like an active meditation one performs to receive kulipas. As with most cults, women are spiritually special, so only they are allowed to perform the special shore pp with Munan Sensei privately. You get all of this from one substory. And I bet you if you played the substory, most of these details probably came back to you pretty quickly even before I laid it out. Now tell me one unique detail about how Palakana operates. Good gracious, a miracle! 
Rejoice, for Madame Nele has extended her divine protection to you and your establishment. Madame Nele, mahalo yoi. And you, my child, I trust that you're unharmed. Here's one. Their leadership is determined by talking stick. Even the Mormons have a better grasp of the line of succession. Just make a list, and then maybe your organization wouldn't be co-opted by a psychopathic, child-loving zealot. Despite being one of the most popular host cubs in town, Stardust has been steadily losing business over the past few weeks, and they can't seem to figure out why. Word on the street is that there's a party that's going on, siphoning women from coming into the club. Kiryu offers to do some investigating and try to get into this party and see what's going on. They tell us that some of the women in the club would probably be able to direct us to where the party is. And so we ask around and we learn that the party is actually happening at the Debola Club in Theater Square, but it's invite only. Despite this, we decide to go anyway because we don't really have much of a choice. And before we leave Stardust, a woman stops us and tells us she can get us in. So we go and meet her at Debola. When we get into the club, the party is popping? Everyone you can talk to seems blasted out of their minds and very thankful for this guru that is throwing the party. They all claim that they've found their perfect match. We notice the lady that we came with is summoned by the guru, so Kiryu decides to follow her. <clears throat> I'm not sure how obvious the connection was between what's going on here and the cult-like nature of it at the time of the Yakuza 1 release, but after playing Zero and the rest of the games, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. The other guy also has multiple slips of the tongue where he goes into the Munan dialect, but quickly moves past it and no one seems to notice. He brings out the guru and the guru informs her that this time the cost of true love is 200,000 yen and she coughs up the money and the guru gives her a drink where shortly after she begins to feel euphoric. And then they call out this guy and tell her that this is the true love that the guru has set her up with. And she goes with it immediately. And this guy doesn't have to drink anything. Wonder what's going on here. Obviously, Kiryu can't let this slide, so he steps up, and the woman that brought us immediately snaps out of it and realizes this is not the guy that she wants to spend her, the rest of her life with, obviously. Of course, we kick the guru's ass. Again, this is a sub-story. All of this is going on between two locations, Debola and Stardust. They're on the same street. The next time we come upon the order is in Yakuza 6, where Kiryu stumbles upon the original Munancho, Munan Suzuki. This is the leader of the cult in Zero. We learn that he's recently been released from prison, but now this time his own actions have come back to haunt him, and his gal pal in Onomichi, Mei, has fallen prey to the order. <laughs> この辺に流れてきました。特に身寄りのない老人を狙っては信者にしてるんです。もちろん、宮田はその懐ですよ。あんたとやり合ってた婆さんは、その隠畜宗教に捕まっちまったってわけか。彼女は宮崎と言います。
So that's him. Had one tenth of the impact that Munan Suzuki had. Eventually, I will break down the issues with Palakana, but think of this as a prologue to that video. Thank you guys for rocking with me till the end of the video, but while you're here, I want to show you something real quick. This is my returning viewer stat. There's at least 1,100 of you guys that have come back to watch another video. If you all could just do me a favor and sugarcoat that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it, as getting some traction on this channel will help me make better content for you. So... Subscribe for better content. Bye. Thank you guys for rocking with me till the end of the video, but while you're here, I want to show you something real quick. This is my returning viewer stat. There's at least 1,100 of you guys that have come back to watch another video. If you all could just do me a favor and sugarcoat that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it, as getting some traction on this channel will help me make better content for you. So, subscribe for better content. Bye.